On January 28th, the Roman Catholic Church celebrates St. Thomas Aquinas, the 13th century theologian who showed the Catholic faith is in harmony with philosophy and all other branches of knowledge. The son of Landolf, Count of Aquino, St. Thomas Aquinas was born circa 1225 in Rocca Secca, Italy, near Aquino, Terra di Lavoro, in the Kingdom of Sicily. His mother, Theodora, was a Countess of Teano. Thomas's family members were descendants of Emperors Frederick I and Henry VI. Before St. Thomas Aquinas was born, a holy hermit shared a prediction with his mother foretelling that her son would enter the order of friars preachers, become a great learner, and achieve unequaled sanctity. Thomas had eight siblings, and he was the youngest child. Following the tradition of the period, St. Thomas Aquinas was sent to the Abbey of Monte Cassino to train among Benedictine monks when he was just five years old. St. Thomas Aquinas remained at the monastery until he was 13 years old, when the political climate forced him to return to Naples. Thomas began his theological studies at the University of Naples in the fall of 1239. It is believed that Thomas was introduced to his philosophical influences, Aristotle, Averroes, and Maimonides at the university, where he also met John of St. Julian, a Dominican preacher who influenced him greatly. Thomas soon joined a new religious order known as the Order of Preachers, or the Dominicans, after their founder, St. Dominic de Guzman, an order which placed an emphasis on preaching and teaching. Thomas's parents were none too pleased with his decision to join this new evangelical movement. In order to talk some sense into him, Thomas's mother sent his brothers to bring him to the family. Having resisted his family's wishes, he was placed under house arrest. A famous story has it that one day his family members sent a prostitute into the room where Thomas was being held prisoner. but Thomas drove her off with a fire iron. As the door slammed shut behind her, he traced a black cross on the door. That night, two angels appeared to him in a dream and strengthened his resolve to remain celibate. Eventually, Thomas's mother relented and he returned to the Dominicans in the fall. Thomas went to study at the Faculty of the Arts at the University of Paris, where he is believed to have met Dominican scholar Albertus Mangus, the Chair of Theology, who was later canonized as a saint by the Church. Under the tutelage of St. Albert the Great, Thomas subsequently earned his doctorate in theology. Thomas was quiet and seldom spoke at the university, leading other students to believe he was dim-witted. They started calling him the Dumb Ox. After reading Thomas's thesis and thinking it was brilliant, his professor, St. Albert the Great, proclaimed, We call this young man a dumb ox but his bellowing in doctrine will one day resound throughout the world. By the time he was 23, Thomas was teaching alongside his mentor at the University of Cologne. After completing his education, St. Thomas Aquinas devoted himself to a life of traveling, writing, teaching, public speaking, and preaching. Around the middle of the century, Thomas was ordained to the priesthood, in which he showed great reverence for the liturgy and skill as a homilist. Religious institutions and universities alike yearned to benefit from the wisdom of the Christian apostle. Combining traditional principles of theology with modern philosophic thought, 
Thomas's treatise touched upon the questions and struggles of medieval intellectuals, church authorities, and everyday people alike. Thomas believed that people could have both faith and reason, and said that both kinds of knowledge came from God, so it was all right to have both. This theory is called scholasticism, and his work popularized this theory. He believed that people could prove that God existed in five ways, including understanding that cause and effect was all under God's control. All movement in the world came from God, and that human intelligence was a gift from God. He also believed that God was all-powerful and that people could earn admission into heaven by abiding to moral and government laws. He had lots of followers and people who agreed with him, so he was very influential, both while he was alive and for centuries after his death. Thomas continued to teach and write till 1272, and it was during this time that he wrote his most famous works, Summa Theologi and De Virtutibus and De Eternitate Mundi. He later established the university in Naples and took the regent master post. In 1273, Thomas was seen by the sacristan to be crying and levitating in prayer before an icon of the crucified Christ at the Dominican convent of Naples in the chapel of St. Nicholas. During this prayer, Christ is said to have told him, You have written well of me, Thomas. What reward would you have for your labor? Thomas replied, Nothing but you, Lord. Following this exchange, something happened, but Thomas never wrote or spoke of it. Thomas refused to write any more. When begged to return to work, he replied, I cannot, because all that I have written seems like straw to me. In January 1274, St. Thomas Aquinas embarked on a trip to Lyon, France, on foot to serve on the Second Council, but he never made it to his destination. Along the way, he fell ill at the Cistercian Monastery of Fossanova, Italy. The monks wanted St. Thomas Aquinas to stay at the castle, but sensing that his death was near, Thomas preferred to remain at the monastery, saying, If the Lord wishes to take me away, it is better that I be found in a religious house than in the dwelling of a layperson. Often called the Universal Teacher, St. Thomas Aquinas died at the monastery of Fossanova on March 7, 1274. His original feast day was March 7, the day of his death. But because the date often falls within Lent, in 1969, a revision of the Roman calendar changed his feast day to January 28. St. Thomas's comments and philosophical writings are still debated today, and his aesthetic theories, such as the concept of claritas, deeply influenced the literary writings of James Joyce and Italian semiotician Umberto Eco. St. Thomas is often depicted with an open book or writing with a quill. Hello, viewers. Sorry for interrupting the video. I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.